Good evening everybody and here we are at Alka Island National Park and we're standing here beside a Stotton Lake and we're here tonight to do the second burn of the Fulton wood stove. So stay tuned to see what we discovered this time. It's pretty dirty. You may recall that when we did the first burn of this wood stove, that there was some blistering of the paint and we actually reached out to the manufacturers and they said that that's perfectly normal. However, we have noticed that there is some corrosion. So we're not entirely sure whether we're really satisfied with that. So we're gonna persevere. We're gonna treat the corrosion of cells and uh, just see how things pan out over the next few uses. So we're going to boil the kettle up, have a nice cup of tea, and we're going to have a nice evening sandwich. So I've put a little bit of fat wood in here to get things going. I'm just going to pop in the, uh, the firewood now and then we're going to get that kettle on the go. So that's a brew made. Now we're gonna cook some food and we're gonna have a bacon and egg bap. And what I'm gonna do is put these buns in face down and just toast them lightly, ready to add the bacon and the eggs. Ah, oh, yes. Excellent. They look good. And then I'm going to cook up some bacon. I suspect they're going to cook very quickly. And while that's cooking, I'm going to mix up the eggs and some milk. going to do scrambled eggs. Mm. 
it doesn't take too long to do baking on this stove because it's definitely giving out a fair bit of heat there today. Now let's see what happens with these eggs. Could end up being an omelette rather than scrambled eggs. A bacon omelette. I would say that's nearly done. I'm going to put a couple of slices of the cheese on top now. And the heat will just melt that nicely. So the Fulton wood stove does get through wood very quickly. Um, we do have the damper on the front, but it actually needs one in the chimney as well to prevent it burning through things so quickly. Um, and that's going to be one of the modifications that we're going to be doing over the coming months. Another of the modifications that we're considering is putting a fireproof window in the side. And, and this will help us to keep an eye on just how quickly that wood is burning through. As we said earlier, um, there is a little bit of corrosion and we can certainly smell some of that factory paint still burning off now, um, even though it's not quite as bad as it was on the first burn. So we will be giving it a coat of paint at some point probably our own design and quite possibly per pillar box red. Let's get this transferred to the back. <laughs> it certainly looks good. And yep, it smells great too. Just remember that gets hot. <laughs> Perfect. It's almost time for us to go home now, but there are just a couple of things that we haven't yet mentioned. Now, the first thing is you have to be smart when you come to your meal planning. The cooking surface is only big enough for one pan, so you either need to jiggle them around a bit and cook one thing at a time, or mix them in the same pan like we did. And in terms of the paint peeling, I think we've got the, through the worst of it now, and it's certainly much better than it was the first time round. Now in our previous video, people were asking how much heat this stove actually gives off. And I would say that for a four man tent, you're gonna be very warm on those cooler evenings if you're camping. Now, of course, this does mean that this stove is particularly thirsty in terms of the amount of wood that you have to keep feeding it. And that's why we were considering putting in that damper in the chimney so that we have more control over the amount of heat it gives out. Now it does get very dirty once you've used it, so it looks like it could be a high maintenance stove, but given the price that we paid, that's okay. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this second review of the Fulton wood burning stove. If you have, please like this video and of course add any comments below if you'd like to ask any questions or you want further comments about what we think about it. Part three will be coming out soon, so you may wish to consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss out on what comes next. For now though, thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again very soon. And of course, with any of these kind of trips, make sure that you leave no trace. Let's help to keep these Alberta parks and campgrounds open. <laughs>